This is one of multiple videos discussing the integration between Paper Trail and GNS3. System overload. Paper Trail allows you to collect your log messages very quickly using a cloud-based system. It also has a number of cool features, including the ability to aggregate your app logs, text, log files, and syslog in one place. You can view your log messages in real time using a browser or an API, and you can integrate with applications such as Slack. In this first video, I'm going to show you how to quickly get a GNS3 router communicating with Paper Trail using a free account. So rather than running a local syslog server in GNS3 or on a computer somewhere, you simply use the cloud to store syslog messages. This is a nice way to learn about syslog if you're preparing for your CCNA exam, as an example. So the first part of this is to go to papertrailapp.com and create an account. So I'll just create one using my Gmail account and then create a password and click Start Logging using the free plan. Once you've done that, you can add your first system to Paper Trail. Now this information is required to do the integration, but it is available using the account. So I literally created a new account in Paper Trail, and all I need to do now is get GNS3 integrated with the Paper Trail system. Paper Trail have documentation showing you how to configure remote syslog on router switches and network devices. Many devices are supported, including Cisco ASA and PIX, Cisco iOS, Juniper, Ruber and many others. In this example, I'm going to use Cisco iOS because in my GNS3 topology, I'm going to use a Cisco iOS V router for my initial configuration. Now, to enable the router to talk to the internet, I'm going to drag a NAT device to the workspace and connect the viral router to the NAT node. If you don't see that node, it's probably because you're using an older version of GNS3. In this example, I'm using GNS3 2.0.0 beta 3. So that's my topology. What I'll do now is start up the router and open up a console. So my router is booting up. That's probably the longest part of this integration. While we're waiting for the router to boot up, notice the configuration that we need to do. We need to type configure terminal, logging host, and then point it to the host that was created. This is the host that I just created on Paper Trail. The port number that I've been allocated is 27084. Your information will be different to this. So I'm going to use the host name allocated, and I'm going to replace this UDP port number with 27084. I'm going to specify a facility of syslog and I'm going to enable trap debugging. The documentation here also shows you information for older versions of iOS, but in this example, I'm once again using a Cisco viral image, which is running version 15 of software. So those are the commands that we need to type on the router. First thing I'll do is go onto the Gigabit 00 interface, the interface connected to the NAT node, and I'll no shut it and I'll configure it to use a DHCP IP address. I'll give it a host name of router1, and then we'll use the command logging host, and the host that we're going to use is this host. So I'll paste that in. Transport is going to be UDP. Port 
port number is going to be this port number. So I'll paste that port number in. Now previously, my device was allocated an address through DHCP. So now the router is able to look up the domain name and resolve that, as you can see here. So as an example, this router now has internet access and that's required to get to the paper trail server. Next command is logging facility syslog, logging trap debugging, save the configuration. That's all I need to do on my GNS3 router. So back on the paper trail system, I'll go to dashboard and you can see that it's picked up a host name. That's my GNS3 router. As you can see in the output here, some messages were already written. And if I scroll up through the output on my CLI, you can see that that was written to paper trail. So I'll zoom in here. That message is this message as seen on the router. You can also see here that configuration was written and that's what we see over here. So that's all I had to do to get paper trail working. What I'll do now is show you this in real time. So I'll type conf t and then control z. Something has been written to the console here. And as you can see, it's shown on the output of paper trail. So I've now got a functioning syslog server. I'll create a loopback and configure an IP address. And you can see that here. I'll shut the interface down. Interface has gone down on paper trail. Paper trail allows you to search as an example for keywords. So I could search for up, down. And notice it's showing me up, down statements only. So let's create another loop back. Give it an IP address of that. Here you can see that interface loopback one came up. I'll shut it down. There you can see that it went down. I'll no shut it and do the same with loopback zero. And on the paper trail system, you can see loopback one came up and so did loopback zero. So that was a very basic example of how to integrate paper trail with GNS3. In subsequent videos, I'll show you additional options with paper trail, including how to integrate paper trail with Slack. But if you're studying for your CCNA exam, as an example, this is a very easy way to get a real syslog server up and running and integrate it with GNS3. The great thing is it's free for 48 hours of search and a seven day archive. So if you want a syslog server for your GNS3 topologies, this is a way to leverage the cloud rather than trying to install and configure your own syslog server. I hope you found this video useful. If it's been of benefit to you, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.